Hello, my name is Luna, and you're listening to Infinite Souls, a podcast for that real talk about consciousness, spirituality, and realizing our infinite potential. Mucho, mucho love and light. Hello, Infinite Souls. Welcome to another podcast episode. Woo-hoo. Happy Friday. I have a lovely guest on today. You guys have heard him on the show before. None other than the one and only Sifu Buggy. Hello. How you doing, Sifu? I I am good. I am very good. Um, yes, yes, every, everything's all uh turn around and uh is awesome but we'll get to that in a bit so yes yeah. i am good yes that's amazing i'm happy that you're doing well how have you have you been feeling um i know there's gonna be a new moon coming up and it's in libra so uh, there's changes happening like in relationships and stuff like that like when we're recording this podcast um and I know that you have been going through some changes. I feel like a lot of us are adapting new changes since there was a lot of awakenings and those relationships intertwine with others and all that. So there's a lot of changes in relationships, I think, going on um, and also in personal lives. But I want to hear about the changes that you've been going through. I know that there's new things happening. Sifu, fill us in. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I- for for me, I've always found um, I've always, I I think there's certain people in this world that you know certain things happen to them, and it's sort of like that they're, they're the beginning, they're the forerunners. I think I've always when people talked about the 144, I've always said I for me there's 144 wave. So the 144,000, whatever it is, it's a wave of people. Then the next wave, the next wave, and you get people who you know go a bit of ahead of time and and um i well actually i'll jump back a little bit that you know back in the 90s i was in um sort of in close protection but my teachers were sort of in a way were sort of like the Taoist version of harry potter they 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 were very much in the real world in one way but in like the ft 500 or 100 index businesses um they they actually they don't tell you this publicly but they believe in esp they believe in psychic abilities they use magic all the time they use curses and blessings on each other all the time there's there's literally banks that are sending negative energy to one and attacking the other sending it and they do it all the time it's it's a normal it's a normal thing and my teachers would actually train up different people in my past that was very much in my past so what happened um this was over like 20 years ago now i fell in love and and i had a, a crossroads was do i go one way or the, the other do i carry on in the harry potter jedi Taoist world or do i go back to being normal you know sort of trying to go back to sleep and i chose to try and go back to sleep i tried to be a dad i tried to be house hus- husband and um and it didn't work out very well, uh, but I got a beautiful <laughs> daughter because of it, uh, a beautiful, uh, my beautiful uh, Ketra, but I try to live that normal life. And there's this thing you sort of see, like, you know, you take the, you know, you take the red pill, you wake up, you can never go back um, because it's, it's, it does. It's a long time to try to fit in, especially um, that relationship actually broke up because of dark light and soul, and I went through that. And and um, and I had opportunities to go abroad and go away, go back to China, go over to Philippines, go to Thailand. But I had a daughter, and my responsibilities in my head was to my daughter, so I stayed here and I didn't do that. Um, and because of that, because of certain things, it's interesting how the universe plots a path for you. You know, is you know, there's that question of do you believe in fate or do you believe do you believe in free will or do you believe in in fate destiny? 
And I believe in both. I think it's both. I think there's certain things that are, you know, it's like um, there are many roads to Rome. There are many roads to Italy. There's many roads to what you desire. There's many roads. So I think, I think there are certain things that are set and then you sort of do a path because it's very interesting how I went from in 1990, uh, in the 90s, I was supposed to be going to China for 20 years plus in 2000 or almost indefinitely. And I would have had a totally different life. And I didn't do that. And instead, I chose to you know, try to go back into the real world or try to be do a nine to five job and try to do do that. And it flipped. And he didn't let me do that, but he sort of didn't let me do the other as well. And and then I've spent this long road slowly coming back. I actually spent 14 years in one in one of the most muggle jobs there is, probably. I actually <laughs> and I've kept it quiet for a long, long time because they don't actually like you promoting other stuff when when you're in that job. But I, I was in the police. Uh, I was in in the British police uh, in the Metropolitan in London. And I was, the role I did was called a peace, PTSO, a police community support officer. And people get often confused about that role, which is probably why I picked it. It's the most awkward role because it, it's it's sort of, it, they call us staff, but we're, we are working for the police with the police. We technically have the right to arrest and you actually in certain uh, situations and you actually are there to, to do crime prevention so we do a lot of crime prevention uh, sort of talks um we did a lot of stuff for the elderly you know in residential homes or the elderly you know trying to keep them them safe we did uh, a lot of stuff um my ward the area is called a ward have different wards and my ward had a big um a big lake and a big park called the Lido. And it was actually like in the UK, um, it's actually promoted as the secret beach. But it's not that secret. 5,000 people turn up every time it's sunny. So it's not that <laughs> blooming secret. But so I got a tourist no attraction. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we ha I had missing kids a lot. You had to watch out for certain undesirables that watch kids. Let's just leave it at that. And, you know, so looking at that, we did uh, a crime prevention. So when um, houses got burgled, that was my role. Had to go to the house, house and give them crime prevention information. And you'd get people that want you to come to the house and actually check, you know, like their house isn't going to get burgled. So the role is very different to what people think it is. And, and you know, there was, oh, you know, you've got no powers and all that. Or they think we're volunteers. And it's like, no, we do get paid. It's it, it's actually a lot more to it than you think, um, but compared to what I used to do, it was a lot different. You know, like people would sort of say, "Oh, you do this job for power." It's like I used to look after uh, princes of 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 uh, Saudi Arabia. I used to look after people who the poor ones only had sixty million. I don't do this job for power. You know, it's it's you know it was a totally different role to what I did as close protection. But it did look after people and it did give me opportunities to sort of do a little bit of sly Taoist ninja magic, um, which I think, you know, we'll talk to you about in a minute because it's that thing of, you know, you're, you're working with people and, and the, board, the people at work, they used to call me Kung Fu Panda because, <laughs> uh, because I did martial arts and I love food and I'm slightly crazy nearly as crazy as Jack, as, uh, Jack Black. So, and I quite like that name. Kung Fu Panda is probably one of the best name, best insults I've been ever given. So, uh, but that was, that was my name. And I was known, I liked cycling a lot. And you got paid, I got paid to cycle. So I patrolled uh, around about, well, it was about a 20 mile area that I cycled around less than 20 miles, but I did about 20 miles a day cycling around, patrolling the area. Um, I was very well known for uh, being the guy on the bike. And, um, and yeah, you know, it's it was an interesting job that I could still be outside and connected to nature and also be down with the muggles as well. So <laughs> Definitely. Oh, my God. 
so from my understanding it's kind of like a like it's police but like private police like right like something yeah it, it, it's so it's so complex it was actually it's in the police force itself it's called the, the they technically it's one of these roles where when it suits them you're staff and when it suits them you're an officer so if something happens you're an officer and you have to deal with that situation um, there was a thing in, in the, I've been in it for the last 14 years, when we had the riots uh, back, what, eight years ago in the UK, they definitely wanted us as being more officers and we had to deal with the situation. Um, you're, you're working with police officers, so like if a police officer's getting beaten up, they want you to join, you know, they want you to help, they want you to stop it, or if somebody's getting attacked, somebody else is getting attacked, they want you to stop it. And I definitely, I've been threatened I mean, I have anyway in, in the old stuff I used to do, but as a PCSO in that role, I got threatened by a few knives. A few people tried to threaten me, been in a few situations where it could have turned really ugly. You know, there the could have been a really fighting situation. Um, I've I've had people really upset, distraught or really angry, and I've had to bring them down, calm them down, and I'm doing a little bit of my magic stuff at the same time, you know, sort of bring them down. Um, so yeah, you know, it's, it, it's not super quiet all the time, but it was, and, but it wasn't super busy all the time. I wasn't in the busiest area, but I definitely wasn't in the, the quietest, but, you know, like I said, I, I dealt with drunken people at a pub. I dealt with people upset who ha have had their, you know, lifetime possessions stolen. I've had, uh, uh, distraught parents looking for their children. I've had missing children looking for their parents. I always say I like I like it when I have missing parents. The missing parents can be gone for days. I've got the most <laughs> important person. I've got the child. Um, but I've also dealt with missing, I've, I've dealt with runaway horses and a couple of runaway cows because where we were is a little bit countryside as well. So it's been, you know, it was a very interesting mix of different different stuff. It wasn't it wasn't all boring. It wasn't all one thing. There was lots of different things that happened. And it gave me the opportunities, like, like I said, sort of to do sort of a bit of the spiritual stuff, but not in a direct way, but do it in an indirect way. Yeah, yeah. You were still helping others, you know, when when someone has a desire to help others. Um, or be a peacekeeper or be a Jedi it doesn't mean that you have to have a job that is you know uh, like very spiritual you can be still working in the in the tech real world quote-unquote real world in the muggle world in the muggle world and and still be doing work more incognito more like uh, undercover right <laughs> and how my question for you is how did you how did you keep your sanity or your balance your peace your inner peace while having to deal with stressful situations um often you know what i mean I, I, that's an interesting that's a very interesting question because um very difficultly um it wasn't it wasn't always easy cuz because i mean i i was always it, it's an interest i've often said um so it's sort of like a uh, in in the martial art world, I've seen too spiritual. In the spiritual world, I've seen too martial arts arty. In the physical, in the normal world, I've seen too normal. In the the non normal world, I've seen too normal. And it's always didn't quite you know never quite fit in certain places. I mean, for me, there are certain things that always ground me and always root me. And one of them was uh, was was going in, in the countries, like into nature. So I was lucky that um, uh, there was literally uh, a wooded area. It was over five, well, about 600 years old woods, uh, if not older, um, called the Rice of Lido. And I, that as it was part of my ward, I could cycle there every single day and I would go down there for half an hour. And, and I, I would often like take my break and, and do a bit of Qigong in the woods, go and sit there to go in the woods and, and or sit there and, you know, you can sit, you know, just sit there and watch the world go by, but technically meditate. 
Um, and then off duty, I would I would actually go to the coast. I'll go down the coast because the sea has always been the thing that supercharges me the most. Um, apart from ice skating, though, which is another one of my pa uh, passions, but it was knowing what fulfills me and getting that as much as much as possible because actually at the time where I was living where I was actually living wasn't a very nice place it was it, it um there was a park nearby but somebody died in that park once a year um there was a couple of drug dealers that sort of lived nearby there was a lot of noise all the time and 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 there's the energy there was quite aggressive with, with people so I would go to work to escape in one, in, in one way where it was actually a nicer area that I worked than where I lived. Um, and then eventually, only like uh, only like a year and a half ago, I actually got the opportunity, because of certain things happened, I actually got the opportunity to literally move to the coast. So I went to the coast and travelled two hours to get, get to work and two hours to get back. And I did that for about uh, the first six months. And then, and then what I was doing was actually uh, couch surfing. I would actually stay on somebody's, when I was at work, I'd stay at somebody's couch um, and uh, I would uh, uh, do that for the four days that I worked and I got three days off. So the four days I worked, I'd be sleeping on somebody's couch and then um, I would uh, uh, then go back to Worthing and, and where, I, where I lived for the other three days. So it was almost the last year and a half that I was there was very nomadic. And for a lot of people that was like, you know, oh, oh, that's terrible, you know, you know, like four hours, you know, traveling on the train, that's horrible. And it's like, <laughs> no, it's freaking lovely. You know, it's all <laughs> Because I finish work in two and a half hours, I get to sit on the beach, hear the sand, hear, you know, the sea. Even if it's raining, there's, you know, an alcove, I can sit under there and I was in heaven. And it's, you know, whatever, you know, if it's taught me anything, reminded me anything, is that whatever your passions are, even if you can only do it for 10 minutes every week, do it. Find a way to do it. Find a way to do what you truly want, find a way to do, because that's the only way it becomes bigger, because what you focus on grows. If you, and for a long time, for a period of time, um, especially uh, when COVID happened, um, I couldn't go down the sea. I couldn't go down the sea at all. We were now totally bad. My daughter lived down near the sea, wasn't allowed to see her, and it was probably the lowest that I ever got, you know, is, is um, when I was a kid, uh, actually, you know, and I sort of woke up as a kid and uh, uh, back in the 70s, you know, like, you know, uh, and um, that was, uh, you know, everybody else is like, what, you know, even seeing fairies and energy and people like, what are you talking about? And it wasn't until I, I worked with my my teachers, the, the uh, Shun and Po, and they were going, yeah, fairies exist. They're another dimension. And it was like, you know, like, so matter of fact. And then learning about the five uh, FT 500, 100 index businesses, and they keep it all secret. But, yeah, they, they're fully aware of this. They're fully aware of other stuff. They use magic all the time. They just don't tell you because they want to keep it all for themselves. And it was a very interesting, you know, that was very interesting. So now, you know, coming from that, you know, being back in, it all, if you think of the uh, hero's journey, it's almost going back through, you go through that dark, you know all these new skills, but now you have to, you know, you're limited to how you, you use them. And it was sort of like, you know, like just keeping yourself above water. That's what I did for about a good 14 years, just literally just sort of keeping myself above water. But I was in a situation where the money, I got used to the money and it became to live. And to do everything I wanted to do, I needed that as well. And it just, I had to wait and be patient for the opportunity to arise where I could take the biggest leap of them all and, and go from working in London, living down the coast, to suddenly moving 250 miles away and living in beautiful, uh, be beautiful nine acres of land with its own baby woods growing up. And, and that's another story. And that's and that's where I am now. <laughs>
Hi guys, we're back. We had a little intermission, a little technical difficulties, but we're back. Okay, we're piecing these videos together if you're watching on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and like, okay, and leave a comment if you know Sifu, if you recognize him from other places. <laughs> so we were talking about how now, Sifu, now you are in a different place than where you were working. You were working for the police and that was... The police is all about rules, right? So it's very like strict and it's not so much um what we would consider to be like a spiritual job, right? Mm. And so before we get into like where you are now, tell us how how you were still influencing people on a spiritual level, um, doing mundane things or things that um, are more strict or rigid with rules. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the whole rules thing was was quite interesting. Cause the people who knew me were that they, they they actually had bets of how long I would last, and 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 all of them lost um, <laughs> because they they never thought I would last. You know, for fourteen years, and and and. Um, you know, because they say, how the heck did you get in this old oh, Jedi mind trick? You know, it's like, you know, they, they don't know who the, who the, I really am. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, it, it is all, all about rules. But the, the, it's, it, it's interesting with, um, well, you know, well, with, with the police is what I learned was is to how to do the same thing in a different way. Meaning, like, so so doing energy work doing qigong even like philosophy how do you do it how do you say it and do it in a way that doesn't look like you're doing what you're doing and it's it's sort of magic it is uh, back to harry potter it's sort of magic you know it's the whole idea of it's like you know like philosophies or you're getting people so i do a lot of energy work i do a lot of i have to do reiki but also do shin chi shen and other stuff um and which is chinese reiki and the whole idea is, is, is sort of like, so a police stance is sort of like this, uh, you know, so you're, you know, it's, it's supposed to, you're showing that you're listening, paying attention, but it's like, you know, it's like, oh, okay, or, 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 or just like gently putting my hands out and, and having them down near the lap and, or, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And, and, and just, I'm sending energy or I'm doing stuff. And, and the whole point in, especially if you look into uh, like the law of attraction, you look into the secret, you look into uh, epigenetics and they're talking about is, is like, you know, what you're focusing, what you believe it, like, it, it is true. And there is a thing called in Taoism, there's a thing called Shen Dao, um, which is a uh, Qigong is energizing exercise and it's very physical. Uh, uh, Nei Gong is stretching exercise, Dao is yoga. So it's very much, and it, it works more on the emotional, and Shen Gong works more on the spiritual. But I could be standing like this, but in my head, I'm going, <sighs> so it's imagining certain things in you know in, in in a certain way, and you know to the point where you know there was back in the seventies there was kids who had cancer, and they're there was these um, doctors who just to make the kids feel better um, because of like Star Wars they said imagine that your your cells in your body are the Jedi and imagine the cancer is Darth Vader and the Jedi attack uh, you know at, attack Darth Vader so they got them to imagine this and what shocked the doctors is that these kids were supposed to be terminally ill and 80% of those kids actually either lasted a lot longer or also or 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 went into remission you know they actually and and so that sort of sparks the idea of well you know you don't have to make things very obvious that you're doing stuff because you can do it in your head you know that, that's the whole point and my seafoods were very good at you know like changing the energy in a room literally by focusing on in your head you know you're you're doing this you're you're working things in your head and and so it's the, that's the thing is that you can change things and you don't necessarily have to change things outwardly it can be very mental and in, inwardly 
Um, but it's also of of it just doing it very subtly. You know, it's, it is is like um, you know, somebody's very very aggressive. Is is for for me is like I'm saying right. There's actually a martial art pose called seven stars. Seven stars is one hand here and one hand here. So when I do this, so if somebody tries to attack me, I can grab them here or I can go down here. But I also send out energy at the same time. So look, calm down. You know, look, look, look. Just listen and breathe. And and rather than saying calm down, because when you say somebody very, very angry, you say calm down. No, I won't freaking calm down. Get, <laughs> get lost. Wrong so, answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Very much. So it's like, look, look, you know, look, look, I'm listening to you. How can I help you? Listen, look, you know, just breathe, breathe with me. Listen, you know, breathe and breathe with me. How can I help you? And and you know, it's offering your your rather than telling them to do something, say, look, what do you need me to do to help you? What do you need me to do? How can I help you? I'm listening to you now. So you're sending out that branch. And it's that whole thing of this whole thing in psychology of like if you sort of know they're a little bit musical, you know, say, look, this this look, I'm 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 trying to play a tune here. I'm trying to, you know, li listen to me, you know, th this could really sound like a good idea. And or you, if they're very sporty, you know, try to use words, you know, figure out, you know, listen into your intuition and listen to what they need, you know, from you and then try to listen to to the words. Because I've often found um, I'm dyslexic and and I when people talk, I see visuals. You know, like if you say a chair, I've already got 500 chairs in my head. So you then say a brown chair with green pillows and gold studs. I'm down to about 20 now. Um, and so so I so when people talk, I'm hearing what they're saying. I'm doing the visuals. So um, if they was to say something like. Um, uh, but, it, you know, you know, I want to do this. It's just impossible because of. It's just impossible. And it's like, well, what's impossible? What? You know, tell me and, and then break it down, you know, try to help. And because you, you, when people are very angry, it blows out of all proportions. So you need to sort of draw that energy back. You need to bring it down. And sometimes I do that directly by working on the person. But sometimes, you know, is that let them talking. And while they're talking, I'm creating a black hole in, in the center of the room to draw draw away the negative energy or I create a filter around them and me saying I only will allow in what helps me grow and I will only allow in what helps us grow so you start filtering out what what happens because within what I do there's an interesting thing that um, in that the, the whole earth is haunted and in Eastern philosophy, they, they, they believe that the whole earth is haunted. And there are things, a bit like you look in wild nature and you see, you know, you see birds um, on, on an ox's back and they're eating the, the gnats or you see things eating. There are things out there that we can't see that are, that are feeding off our anger and off our fear and off our fr frustration. So... They, they sort of poke you and, and nudge you and make you more angry and make you more afraid and, and, and the feed. And, you know, when, when you first hear that, it sounds really scary, but it's the understanding of if you know that you know, there's other, and people sort of do, you know, people want to sort of, um, you know, they, they sort of like poke at you or, or, or wind you up because it gives them energy and they mm -hmm. feel better. Have you ever had an argument and you proved yourself right and you feel awesome and they feel de depleted or the other way around have you been in that argument where you know they've won it and you feel really depleted and tired and they're all eh. because we actually we are far more energetic than we realize and we actually feed off each other and other things sort of feed off us as well so it's this thing when you create a filter around yourself and then sort of say, I only allow in what helps me grow. And or if you build up your energy to be bright light, to be brighter than the sun, it's normally too rich for people, you know, or too rich for other, other things. You know, like having a very, very fine or rich sauce. Oh, oh, give me a burger. I want a burger. That's too rich for me. 
you know, and, and it's that, that thing of building your energy up. And when you build your energy up, you become brighter and brighter and brighter. And and so the people who want very uh, particular sort of energy, oh, they back off. And that's I, I learned that from bullying as well, is that, you know, is when I changed my energy, the person bullying me literally sort of was no longer interested or gave up. So it's 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 sort of like for me the energetic world is a it, I I'm very much serious of the energetic world very much believe in the energy world and I've seen things change by me changing the energy whether it's in my head you know physically I could just be sitting here but in my head I'm doing all of this I'm I'm getting out the lightsabers I'm blasting you with chi I'm blasting me with chi and building me up so it's about not necessarily doing things on the outside, but doing it within, but doing it in a way that when you change yourself, everything else follows. Because you're a, dom a domino. Everything is a domino. Everything, everything is cause and effect. You know, it's one thing in science. We talk about cause and effect, and everything is cause and effect. So you are actually a domino. So you change you, it affects everything else. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Your, your energy. Uh, I, I, that's something that I did want to mention about what you're, you're saying is that your energy, I bet you were changing people just by showing up as yourself, you know, staying true to who you are and to what you believe in and grounded in your truth that set off a certain vibration and they had to have felt that you know regardless of what what you said or mm. or what words were uttered you know um and I did want to touch on what you were saying about when when people are angry and these energies um around us that make us even more angry or they feed off of it they say oh that guy's angry let's go feed off of him let's see how much we can feed off of us see how far we can take this right and I was just talking about this in my last podcast. If you listen to the last one, um, it, that one's actually going to be out. Uh, it's not out yet, but that one, I was talking about victim mentality, people with victim mentality. And those people, a lot of the time, people that have that kind of mental state um, at a certain point in their life or whatever, they, they, tend to feed off of others um negativity as well and then they can be energy vampires and not even realize it but that is coming from a lack within that they didn't even realize that that they have you know it could be subconscious so did i know that you did work with people who wanted um to protect their homes from burglary did you encounter a lot of victim mentality in those ways, like, or fear that something's going to happen to them? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that vol. Uh, you, you know, we, uh, you know, people will say about like, police officers, oh, you know, they have an attitude and whatnot, and and they they do, but they do for a reason. You have to sort of see it. You know, the being uh, showing the empathy and realize that police officers will see you at your worst moment. They'll see you at your most terrified moment. You know, they deal with people um, that just just come out of car accidents. They be, deal with people just being robbed, just being stabbed, just being threatened, just being burgled. You know, they see people at the worst or you know thing, and and so. If you're not strong yourself, if you don't know how to connect to your own light, that has a big effect on you. You know, that that, that has, you know, it's like if I tap your, your wrist, you know, at first, that's not going to do anything. But I, I do that for a thousand times for the next five days, you're going to end up with a big bruise. So imagine that, you know, like when people are dealing with, with people under stress all the time, it's a little bit like, you know, like a surgeons surgeons have a very weird sense of humor and 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 they deal with death in a very you know to other people a weird way but when you're dealing with very traumatic things it affects them in a certain way and so yeah that you get people who are in this oh oh, oh everything's falling apart and oh, poor me and you know my goal was always just to go give yeah, you're still alive you know you're alive 
you know, that, you know, you're, you're fine. Every, you know, material stuff can be replaced and all. And it's just trying to get people to, the, the issue, the, there's this weird thing in Taoism, we talk about living in the now, living in the moment. But a lot of people live in the moment, but in the negative moment, they live in the fear and the panic and the anxiety. And, and, the, and that's a now, but it's the scary now. What you want to actually go is, yeah, but I'm still here, or I can change this, I can alter this, and, but, you know, and change, change that perspective. And, and you know, I dealt with a lot of people, we call a ASB, antisocial behaviour. So we dealt with people who had neighbours that had their music too loud or, or, or you know, open their fridge too loudly or cough too loudly and the walls are paper thin. You know, there's a lot of places where, where you know, the houses are not built to have lots of occupants and they're on top of each other. And, you know, and it's that thing of, you know, it's like, like you know, I, I've 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 dealt with people who complained that they their neighbour had a dog and the dog yaps too much or the baby makes too much noise and it's like, but it's a baby, you know, babies <laughs> cry, dogs bark, that's what they do, you know, that it's not they're not doing it purposely to annoy you, but it's people's, you know, they live in their people can live in you can live in your own prison. You know, your own reality can be your heaven or it can be your hell. And when you're stuck in a loop, when you're living, you know, oh, repeating, you know, those negative things, it becomes your prison. You know, your own body becomes your own prison because you focus on those negative stuff. But when you can clear that, when you can realise, yeah, but what, what can I do to change this? What can I do? Like I said, I, I lived at, a, at one point in my life um, and not so long ago, um, only like two years ago, I, you know, the place I lived was, 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 you know, not nice. It wasn't great. It wasn't the greatest place. Um, and, but what I did, I went away. I would go to the coast every single week. I had two days off and one day I would go to the coast. The second day I slept, did nothing but sleep because, you know, sort of, sort of you know, trying to get, you know, it was my body's way of getting over what I was going through. But that's what I did. And it's finding your light in the darkness. It's, you know, you create a match and you can create light. But you can do that. You know, however dark things seem, there's always an up. It could be tiny, but there's an up. There's always a way to create a spark. And it's, and I, I try to teach people that or just blast a lot of chi. And I think, like you're saying, like in that job, you're not allowed to, I couldn't be this while I am right now. But what I could do was smile a lot. And I was known for the person that smiled a lot. You know, you're always happy. You're always cheerful. You're always, you know, telling jokes or, or silly. And that's my way. That's my Jedi way of raising the vibration. You know, being the fool sometimes is what people need to snap them out, give them that red pill and, you know, see things in a different way. Life. does that make sense yes absolutely i know you were out there doing your jedi mind tricks sometimes verbally sometimes not verbally probably you know with your you know how you said because everything is energy everything is energy so a lot of the things that uh, are happening we don't see so you can definitely and like like me for example that i do reiki that is energy work that you don't always see with your eyes i see it with my inner eye um and then you see the manifestations later um but now now that you're not at that job right you're not at that job anymore now you get to be yourself your full self <laughs> all day every day yeah what what changes have happened for you Sifu? now did you leave that job because you wanted to or was it just um yeah yeah it was i i was getting to a point where um i i was getting to a point where you know it was getting tougher and tougher to to you know wear that mask or you know wear that suit and like i said the me was there but it was just like a the filter was down to like you know 99 percent and one percent one percent sifu and and my real name's paul brighton so 99 percent paul brighton or officer brighton and one percent sifu and it was getting to a point where 
it, you know, I was getting to a point, I, I kept saying to the universe, look, I've got all these skills. You, you gave me all these skills. I've got all these freaking skills. Give me an opportunity to freaking use them. What's the point in having them if you don't let me use them? Um, and and then I met my partner and we start, started to blossom. And then it, it's, you know, the beginning of the year, we just start, sorted, you know, just it was not at first subtle about talking about, you know, me coming down here and eventually it was like no nope, yep September because I've only just been a few weeks so it's only three weeks mm. um and but you know so September gonna go down and I'll come down and I am a grafter you know I was a chef I was a baker um and you know for her she's been doing this for like 14 years on her own and so to her it's it you know it gets to you after a while and she loves it she loves this place but also at the same time, it's the it's the same thing to me. It's all brand new. It's all shiny, and 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 also I've got a Winnie the Pooh, um, Dory sort of mentality that it will <laughs> take about fifty years until I get bored of it. You know, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. So I I, I can enjoy it for a long time. Um, but to me, it's fun. You know, it's it like I say, it's taking again. So we're cleaning rooms, doing Airbnb. I clean when I clean a room. The Shaolin, the Shaolin monks, when they would sweep the floor, they would imagine sweeping away the negative energy. You know, when they gardening, they would imagine you know planting new seeds, activating new life. So, I I have a saying. I've got a qigong for that, and my teachers taught me that everything can be a qigong. So everything you do cleaning the toilet i do it as a qigong i'm doing it as i'm cleaning away past life it's so tough doing a room up i'm doing it as a qigong as a meditation even as a yoga you know i'm stretching the body and uh, uh, you know as a as I do it and that's how i was taught so it's that whole idea of doing everything you do in a fun way in a silly way something that amuses you so I put, you know put the music on or i do chanting i chant the room and I clean the room and energize the room. But that's the whole thing. I'm doing all of that. And it's, it's, um, else you sort of found like, you know, like something happened and, uh, and I've already gone, boop, 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 boop. you know, I've already got 15 solutions. So, uh, but it's only just happened. It's, yeah, but it, I've got like, you know, a speedy <laughs> Gonzalez in my brain. You know, I've already, I've already figured out the solution. So it's the whole idea of, yeah, you know, it's a new playground for me. It's that's the whole point. I mean, I'm in a beautiful barn right now. You know, mm -hmm. this is my studio. This is, you know, where, and it's I um, just two days ago, I was teaching in here. A week ago, we had a wedding in here. We got another wedding in a couple of weeks. We've actually got gong bar, uh, the old gong gongs uh, here on Friday. So there's always different stuff happening, and there's always. You know, uh, people can just uh, sort of we're, we're on the campsite thing, and they'll just turn up for camping. So you, there's always different things happening. It's it's never 100 percent predicted. Even if we plan stuff, you still can't hit 100 percent. And I like a little bit of mystery. I like a bit of spontaneity. I like things suddenly throwing, you know, throwing things at me. Um, I'm sort of known as a teacher that I I treat you like a wall, and I throw 50 things at you and see what sticks. So I give you a couple of different exercises. Uh, which which one do you prefer? Oh, I like this one. Oh, okay. So we will we'll <laughs> then go down that route. And that's so I like that sort of stuff. I like being spontaneous. I like um, my name, Borgi, means the balancer between the chaos and the karmis. So I like a bit of chaos, and I like filtering it down to the karmis. So, so yeah, <laughs> that sounds so freaking awesome. I'm so excited for you that. You showed me the property before we before we were on the Zoom call and it looks beautiful and amazing in nature. You get to be out connecting with nature and doing your qigong while you're cleaning a window because yes, because everything can be a meditation, okay? I I practice this. I try to practice it every day because I have a thing about washing dishes. You know, like it get it just really bothers me to wash dishes. I don't know why. You know, it's it's a it's a childhood thing. I know why. <laughs> um, but so I learned, you know, do it with joy, do it like a dance, and then you're only washing one dish at a time. It's only one dish that you wash because you only mm -hmm. 
the one moment is all you have right like that's not everything yeah. that exists is in this moment and only one dish at a time is what you're doing so so the joy of washing dishes the joy of sweeping and and then also about like imagining the negativity going away that's something that I do like when I do spiritual baths or when I clean when I mop I imagine taking out all of the all the negativity, all of energy that no longer serves and draining it away. And and it really is a magical thing that you can do. It's everyday magical thing, like kitchen witch stuff that they call them <laughs> over here in the West, you know? But like you said, for you, it's Qigong. Everything is Qigong for you, you know? And everything is love and everything can be beautiful. And um, I, I mean, whatever you call it, it, it is, you know, or a lot of people talk about the masculine and the feminine. And I always thought, you know, you, the, the, you know, yes, we had the male, female, banana goat, but also, you know, that that's a that's a seafood joke. Um, <laughs> but, but also, it's the whole thing. The divide, the the masculine are qualities, you know, getting things done, you know, do, do being assertive, doing that's a sort of more of a masculine quality. Nurturing, loving, that's more of a, a feminine quality. But there's also the sacred child play we're meant to play we're meant to have fun we were to you know when we were kids you stop talking to people you know stop talking to your imaginary friends but go and see a psychic who's talking to imaginary friends <laughs> they're not imaginary you know go, you know go you know don't you know you know don't, uh, oh, stop playing with that box and pretending it's something else and, but there are people who get paid to take a load of rubble and to make it into art or or, or take a, a load of metal and make it into an airplane or a rocket or a ship mm -hmm. you know it's interesting we were told not to do stuff but actually be child the you know the the sacred child that child energy is vital for growing it's vital for the shouting monks they, they originally were very unfit and fat and buddha rama came a lot along from india and he said spiritually you are high but physically and emotionally you are very low here's yoga and learn yoga and then le learn from nature other exercises and so it's those monks the monks in the orange robes the shaolin monks who created martial arts they created the the fight or well, at least the shouting martial arts they create the fighting techniques but it wasn't about fighting it was about spiritual understanding from their exercise they learn to expand so just from cleaning a toilet you can actually clear out you know clear out uh, um negativity from your your, your mind from your your aura from taking away dirt from from a from a uh, a plate you can actually be energizing your yourself it's actually funny you were saying about like washing dishes my my partner has a dishwasher and she and, and i'm going no don't use the dishwasher i'll wash them up and just like but we got a dishwasher it's like no i want to do them you know because it's a it's a meditation i really love doing that meditation and, and and washing those dishes and and sort of using it as, as part of my practice and and but whatever you do, whether it's yoga, whether it's Tai Chi, whether it's Qigong, whether it's fishing, whether it's needle knitting work, whether it's football, soccer, play, do it as a playful thing. Allow it to, the, the issue, what we do, we turn things into sports or we turn things into political and it's right and wrong, good or bad. Mm -hmm. And it's, forget the right and wrong, good or bad, forget who wins, it's about playing. The playing is the important thing. Not actually, you know, the taking part is actually the important thing, not the actual winning, mm. because because there'll always be a winner, and there'll always be a loser. But it's the bit in between that actually matters. It's the going through that process and learning. And ironically enough, um, in martial arts, my teachers actually would put me against people that I had a 99% chance of losing mm. because... It wasn't about winning. They, they, you know, winning you don't learn much. It's mm -hmm. losing that you learn. How do I? How do I do things differently? How do? It, and and that's the thing. You know, it, it's like, you know, well, uh, you know, the musician here. You know, the songwriter. It's it's the process of learning the song is 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 probably the bit, best bit for you. Once the songs 
created, you're, you know, you're ready to move on to the next one. And everybody's, oh, wow, this is an amazing song. It's like, yeah, but I've done that already. You know, I've created it. It's already, you're already, you know, so it's that interesting thing is the process is actually the enjoyable thing rather than the end result. And it's a bit like that even for a chef. It's actually cooking, making, you know, you're only as good as your last dish because you're always making a new one. It's always on about the prep to the next dish. Hey, what do yes. I like? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I love everything you just said. Let that be a reminder to everyone listening to play more with life, make a play out of life about out of everything and watch how much happier you are and how much how many more beautiful things you start to notice in your life. <laughs> you know, um instead of making everything a competition and in that it is in a competition. We're all in this together. We're all trying to figure it out together. Just just exist. Just be. Okay? And be happy. <laughs> be happy with what you have it at the moment, you know, sometimes we we want to think of what we could have or what we lost, quote unquote lost, what we think we lost, but we forget to stop and smell the roses. So play a little bit with life today. If you're listening out there, I hope this message touched those beautiful ears and that beautiful heart of yours. Uh, Sifu, thank you for being on today. I really really enjoyed this conversation i hope to have you on soon again we might have to do a part two because there are a couple of things that i still there's another topic that i want to get into but maybe we'll do that for the next podcast okay so for anybody listening if you guys want to hear a part two leave a comment in the comment box on youtube because this is where i'll be posting it uh, i usually have like previews on instagram but Sifu, what is your social media? Where can people find you and get to know you better? Well, basically, S-I-F-U, Sifu, Boggy, B-O-G-G-I-E. You can find that on Facebook. You can find that on Instagram. You can find that on YouTube. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, those definitely. I'm actually on linked, uh, uh, LinkedIn, but under slightly different pool book. Boggy Brighton, um, but uh, yeah, you know, you can find find me there. There's loads of videos. I've done loads of like classes. I'm always doing a couple of free classes uh, right at the moment uh, for the UK because it, it, it's too early in the morning for you guys. But 9 a.m. UK um, Monday to Friday on Facebook. If you look up Seafood Boggy, you'll find uh, Chi Time Live where we do a 20 minute class of qigong energizing exercise but it's as always it's never just one thing with me it's qigong there's a bit of uh, acupressure in there there's a bit of reflexology there's a bit of my humor blah, 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 blah. and <laughs> we actually have alpacas because we have al alpacas here because they're asleep now so i can't go and show you them but um we have alpacas here uh, on the farm so i've been doing qigong with the alpacas so awesome. so that that's that's my new my new thing right now so yeah that's pretty much where you can find me yeah paka chong you're doing <laughs> you're doing qigong with the pakas alpacas i freaking love it all right guys make sure that you follow sifu and if you are in the uk or if you want to wake up extra extra early and catch that qigong with him Make sure that you join that, okay? I love you all. And until next time, as always, mucho, mucho love and light. Bye. Ciao.